Chris O'Leary is the d- former director of U.S. Hostage Rescue, and he joins me now. It's great to have you here. Good to be here, Chris. Um, so just take me through just at a, like a ground level, because this, you know, you've got the Israeli government saying Hamas is equivalent to ISIS and the Nazis and that, you know, reeling from this brutal murder of its citizens. They have 240 Israelis and other nationals, right? The head of Mossad is in Doha, and he's not going to negotiate with them? Like, what, what, how does that work? Well, they have to do it because they have limited options otherwise. Um, although they did uh, have a successful rescue um, as part of their ground operation, um, I think as uh, we get the full story on that, it was probably not one of the hostages held by uh, Hamas, um, but more likely either Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which I still don't think that would have been the case, but maybe one of the uh, disparate affiliates. Um, Hamas has been trying to seize control of all of the hostages. Um, So as the ground operation uh, was going, um, there are opportunities to maybe get some of the the folks that are more accessible. That's interesting, Um, okay. But that's not to say that they won't continue to try to collect intelligence, uh, illuminate the network, and try to find where the hostages are and seek um, opportunities to recover. Uh, At the end of the day, the special operations and intelligence forces that do hostage rescue and recovery are the top tier. They're problem solvers. Um, They're not wishing for an environment that is ideal. They're working within the confines of what they've been given, and they will try to find solutions. Um, and I have every confidence that we'll, they will continue to work at this. But what the mature approach is, is to also try to negotiate at the same time. Understanding that you don't have a legitimate partner in the negotiations, it's Hamas. They're a terrorist organization. Palestinian Islamic Jihad is a terrorist organization, which many people don't know was born out of Egyptian Islamic Jihad, mm-hmm. where Ayman Zawahiri was yep. one of the founding members of. So understand who we're dealing with. These are Islamists who just carried out on October 7th a horrific attack. They are not rational actors in this negotiation. They are taking very deliberate steps to be manipulative. Each and every uh, measure that they make, releasing the the video of the hostages yesterday for propaganda was to pull leverage back to their side. Yeah, I mean, also, it strikes me that you can be manipulative and rational, right? I mean, there's some some back and forth here where for the negotiations even to exist, there's some conception that the other side has some interest and you have some interest and you can find some way that they're mutually recognizable such that people's lives are spared, right? I mean, that's basically the goal here. But in terms of like how they actually happen, the, the head of Mossad isn't sitting down with someone from Hamas, right? I would find that very unlikely, although there have been times in the past where Israeli intelligence has been face-to-face with Uh, members of Hamas um, and other Palestinian groups. So it wouldn't be out of the question. Uh, I would say it's most likely that they're going to use the Qataris as the intermediary. Um, I have been involved in talks in Doha where all parties have sat around the table. Um, But with the current situation, the current sensitivity, I think it would be unusual where we would see the actual head of the Mossad across the table with Abu Ubaidah or somebody else. As someone who's done this kind of work, I mean, what kind of, I guess, such a subjective question, but I want to ask it because I think it's so brutal to think about those folks being held captive. Like, what hope do you have for more hostages being released? I think it's very likely. I think it's going to be done over time. Um, Hamas is not going to just open up the gates and let everybody free. Uh, Hamas will likely, as being as being reported, release some of the international um, victims Uh, but not all of them. Uh, Anybody who's a dual passport holder um, from certain countries, my assessment would be they'd hold on to them because, again, it gives them leverage. um, They're able to manipulate the the environment later um, for longer. Uh, But I do think that to get some international, more international support um, and some of the leverage back on their side, they will release some. um, But this is going to drag out over time. Those Israeli military members in uniform could be held for years. Galat Shalit, of course, the uh, IDF soldier who was taken by Hamas and held for many years uh, before uh, his release and that prisoner swap uh, back in 2011. 2011. Yeah.